Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, yes, it's uh, round two, uh, uh, hangout number two, to blog or not to blog, I think it is. Um, I'm Lorna, I'm a learning development manager, and uh, my interest in this is because I'm thinking about blogging. Um, and I have written a blog, as Mike and Adam already know. So um, this is really interesting for me in terms of taking my journey further around this subject. So is that enough for now? Excellent. Okay, my name's Adam. <laughs> okay, my name's Adam. I'm the L&D specialist. Uh, starting a new role um, next week at Poundland. So no jokes about do I get a discount or anything like that because I don't. <laughs> one pound for me as well. Um, I'm really the same as Lorna. Um, I haven't wrote that many. Oh, blimey! <laughs> uh, I haven't wrote that many blogs. Um, about six in total. And my main interest in this. Google Hangout was to get an idea on of your experiences and other people's experiences and also to look at how they can be used internally and I haven't seen them used internally so I'd like to know more about how they can be so that's why I'm here. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, so I'm Mike Collins, um, we're for DPG and we are currently streaming this live into the DPG community so a big hello to everybody in the community who's, who's watching the streaming event. Um, unfortunately Google events has uh, struck again um, because for some strange reason we can't seem to get everybody who um, wants to come into the, the, the Hangout actually into the Hangout so again Phil apologies, Liz apologies uh, and we know we've got a few people in the community who, who are watching the event. Um, so, I mean, without without further ado, really, I think Lorna's given a really good intro uh, to the session. Um, Adam, Lorna, and myself are just going to have a conversation about blogging. Um, and one of the, the the key things for me, I think, is you know how can we encourage other people within the DPG community and then the wider people, wider um, L and D and HR profession to use blogging either as a personal development tool. Um, or as part of, as, as you've mentioned there, Adam, kind of, um, you know, with, within an organisation to help spread a message and, and to support communication. So, um, is it alright, Lauren, if we, if we kind of start with you and just kind of your, your experience in blogging so far? Um, yeah, that's no problem. Um, as I said in the intro, I'm very, very, very new. I'm not like Adam. Adam, you're ahead of me. Six to one, I think it is, you said. Um, so I've only written one blog, but I had, th I had been thinking about doing it. Um, but personally, I felt it was something that was difficult, um, time-consuming, possibly. Um, that, you know, if you start it, you've got to commit to it. Um, and I think like lots of people I've got an awful lot going on work-wise and outside of work as well so it was just a case of I'm really interested in it um, but I, I just don't know really what I'm letting myself in for or what it is I am letting myself in for um, I've got kind of loads of ideas whirling around in my head some very random ones it has to be said um, but um, I kind of think yeah, yeah what do I do with it and how do I spread the word and all that kind of thing and I suppose a fear that nobody would be interested and in read it so that's where my head is at the moment Good stuff and what, what about you Adam do you share some of Lorna's um, thoughts there around blogging? I do know, absolutely I think that the one thing that people are scared of when it comes to blogging is perfection you know, and I felt that as well. When I started um, writing or attempting to write them, I felt like this quest for perfection. I had to get my words right. I had to kind of make sure I read loads of blogs before to see if someone hadn't. I wasn't duplicating anybody else's work. Honestly, it was crazy. So um, I think my feeling about it after doing the, a whopping six blogs is that advice from you, Mike, <laughs> you've said before, it's speak from the heart and don't worry about perfection. My last organisation... Um, there was uh, an expectation that all staff members had to do one blog per month and some people loved it, i.e. like me, I kind of had loads of ideas, some people kind of avoided it like the plague and it's interesting, the reasons for avoiding it uh, were like, well, look, yeah, there's a fear of people being not being interested in what they had to say and um, I think that people don't give themselves enough credit I think someone out there will always be interested in what you've got to say, no matter how mad uh, your point of view is. So, um, and I've experienced that. You know, I've seen 
a blog that I didn't think would get many reads got more. Every blog I've put out there, I think, has always got exceeded my expectations than what the impact has been. So I think that's a message for everyone, really. Uh, you know, I think it's a really interesting, uh, really interesting thing you've raised. There's a couple of things. Is that um, you know th this whole concept of perfection doesn't happen. Um, no. You know you, what you write it will never be perfect. You can always go back to it, and you can always you know think, oh well, I could have done that differently, or I could have you know rephrased that. But I think uh, you know what, what's come from both of those intros there, and a little bit of um, you know kind of information from a pair of you is that you know that this whole thing around other people reading your blogs, um, and it's quite interesting really because I, I guess in my head when I um, started penning, penning blogs. Um, was that it was a really um, personal experience to be honest it was it was a way for me to um, to think through um, kind of the things that I was doing the things that I was um, you know working on and it was a really personal experience like a learning log that was my first experience of blogging um, I didn't call it blogging then I just mm. writing down things that I'd done um, and the more I got into it the more my writing developed um, so, so that, that's how, that's how kind of it, it started. But it was interesting there that you know that that fear factor of what other people are going to think and what other people might say. And you know something, you know, if, even if people read it, you know, that that's that's itself a blocker to to, to blogging. I think. I think you you raise an interesting thing there, though, Mike, because you say it's personal, but it's personal going to the world wide web so you know it's it's interesting you say you, you kind of wrote it for personal reasons you can write something personal but keep it to yourself but you're writing something that's personal but then publishing it to potentially quite a few people so I think um, I think that's the I suppose the slight apprehension that I have and that's perhaps where the perfection bit comes into it because there is almost this the sun realization that once you press send a lot of people are going to see that um, and I'm still getting used to that so I'm still new to Twitter um, I'm kind of getting used to the fact that when I put a tweet out lots of people may see that but blogging is a bit more than just 140 characters so um, so I think that's where my hesitation is and I think also you see other people's blogs and when you see other people's blogs and often people refer to prolific bloggers you hear that phrase an awful lot I, I, I can't see myself being a sorry that's my phone in the background just ignore it um, but I can't see myself being a prolific blogger but you kind of feel that there is you or, or you put pressure upon yourself that you need to keep this kind of blogging thing going on a regular basis and that's I think is what my fear is yeah I mean the, 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 it's, it was picking up on your point there Adam about um, when you were in your last organization uh, people were actually saying that you had to blog one blog a month yeah. Uh, and I think as soon as you start enforcing the fact that you've got to, you've got to do this. I think it takes away some of the um, some of the reasons why you'd want to blog in the first place. Because as soon as you start adding pressure and timelines to it, I think that changes the whole um, approach mm. and thought process around blogging. Because for me, it's a very creative process. Um, it's something that comes when I'm ready to do it um, and Lorna I've, I've kind of had a blog for over 12 months now and there's some months I'll, I'll do one and there's other months I'll do seven and it really does depend what I've got going on in my life, what I've got going in my work, um, whether I can stay up till three o'clock in the morning writing it um, and, and just finding your own style and your own time but without putting any pressure on yourself and I think that, that's an interesting point that, that you raised there Adam about you know almost being told you have to write a blog um, because for me, you know, what, what, what blogging is about is about stories um, and sharing what you're thinking and thought process and what you're doing with others in the hope that other people will, will, will get something from it, either an idea or they'll see that you're doing something that somebody else, you know, that you're working on and give you inspiration or, you know, give, give, you, give you confidence that actually what you're doing is right. Um, but then through the actual act of writing the blog, you know, your thinking process and what you're actually doing is, is refined and, and, and tweaked as well through it. Um, but yeah, I, th I, th I think the whole kind of idea of you know, for forcing is a strong word, but I think, you know, saying that you've got to produce something at a particular time is um, kind of defeats the object a little bit. 
Yeah, that, that can put people off as well completely, you know, and even if they went into a different role, different industry, their feeling about blogging would be destroyed, you know. Um, I think you're right, it's got to be in your in your terms, absolutely, it's got to be personal in your terms, but Lauren, I agree with what you said, I still have a little bit of fear of it now of the credibility element um, mm -hmm. of, you know, you build it up. And kind of, you know, I've got a good Twitter profile. A lot of people on LinkedIn, it's like, oh, right, this guy must be good at L and B. I don't want to put a blog out there and someone goes, actually, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And that, because <laughs> that was my feeling of like, you know, and I've, sometimes with blogs, I think what I've tried to do is, if you put a draft together, and I might have sent a couple to you before they've gone live, is even get someone to read over them. I think that's a really good thing, just not to kind of not completely rip it apart, but just to kind of go, yeah, it sounds like you're on track, yeah, bang it out there. And once you get that confidence, it's, you know, it's that feeling of one, once you've done one or two and you do two or three, I think, you know, you, you can go for it then. I, I mean, I think that's brilliant advice, Adam. Um, but I think coming back to some of the articles you sent out beforehand, Mike, for us to read, um, it's, I, I come back to something you've just said as well, Adam, that it's the it's not the forcing of blogging but there is almost a feeling that it's the it's the latest in thing um and because it's the latest in thing people have got to get into it and like we've got senior management who are trying blogging at the moment and it's quite clear some find it therapeutic others really struggle to kind of think of what they want to say and the message they want to give and that comes across in the blog I actually think but I think there's also an issue that as I say it's the latest thing um, you know blogs are you know if you're seen to be blogging then you are and then it comes away from being a personal journey or a personal therapeutic um, um, tool that one can use and I I do actually think, I mean, with the ideas that I've got going on in my head, I do think it will be quite personal. Some of them will be quite deep because, um, and I think actually the fact that they are going to be quite deep is actually going to be very therapeutic for myself in, in actually getting some of that emotion out, if you like. Um, I'm not sure whether I want people to comment on that or not, but it's, 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 so for me, I do agree, and I do like the idea of being personal, but I think it's just being mixed with a bunch of blogs that really aren't from that kind of um, premise, and people are just doing it for the sake of doing it. And I don't really want to, I suppose, how do you differentiate yours from those who are doing it just for the sake of doing it, I suppose, um, and just wanting to get some kind of message out there, but actually it's, it's just because it's the, the in thing. Well, I think there's a, there's a few things there and again it, it's, it's kind of what is the purpose of blogging because if you're using it as an external communications tool then that's different to writing to reflect on your personal learning experience um, because you know brands um, you know use blogging a lot as part of the marketing mix you know this whole thing around personalizing your brand um, you know and really you know marketing and, and essentially advertising what you're doing how you're doing it um, you know, in blogging format, but, you know, in essence, you know, blogging's been around for years and years. You know, writing stories and telling stories has been around since you know the cavemen. Um, all that's happened now is we've got the tools to be able to share stories at a click of a button with a potential audience of millions. Oh, now um, you made me nervous again, Mike. Why do you have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> well, I mean. I mean, the thing is, you know, you can actually write a, a, a totally private blog. If you if you set up a WordPress site, or even on the DPG community, you have the ability just to write that blog and publish to yourself. Hmm. However, if, 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 if you do that, would blogging appeal as much? Or is it the element of, actually, you want to write something just on the off chance that somebody might read it and connect with it and start a conversation on it? Yeah. Shall I answer? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, if I'm truly, truly honest, I think the, the biggest stumbling block for me is the writing bit because I'm not confident in my writing. So, um, but having said that, I got really positive feedback to the first blog um, and I sent it to a few people at work and they went, oh, that's quite good. And I went, oh, thank you. Um, so I thought... <laughs> No, I can't be that bad, really. So I think it's more a confidence thing around doing 
um, uh, the writing side of it. Um, and I think it's actually nice to get somebody getting some response from it. And I think if you are going to blog and you are going to put it out to millions of people, Mike, thank you very much, um, then it is worthwhile doing it to get some kind of feedback from people about some of your thoughts and feelings. Um, so yeah, I, as I said, I want to do it. It's just a hesitancy, that's all. They don't always have to be text, Lorna. You know, um, sorry. They don't always have to be text or words. You know, some of the blogs that um, I'm attracted to from looking online are usually the ones with videos, audio, or pictures. Even you know, I mean, I think visual trumps everything. And I know that more recently, infographics are being used, and I quite like the look of them. I'm more attracted and more tempted to read blogs that have got pictures. So. You know, if um, if you can remove, or you don't need to, work, you want to kind of do, um, you know, maybe a picture blog or a video blog. I mean, that that was always an option. If work, if writing isn't your thing, it doesn't mean blogging it doesn't have to be your thing. You know, because um, I think there's other ways around it. Absolutely. Like I think I'm going to attempt very soon a video blog on the informal learning group. I don't know how it's going to come across, but I'm going to give it. <laughs> wow. You know, I put it out there now, so I can't. I can't not do it. I put it out there. <laughs> uh, I go, you know, and I feel comfortable with it. And I feel that if I was a learner, I would click on and watch the video. So um, hopefully, yeah. I get more views and hits from that than I would if I'd wrote loads of text. Maybe. So yeah. So well, I'll be watching out for that, Adam. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, Lorna, that, that's that's opening a whole new thing. So what we're talking about here is is, is writing and hiding behind, I know. Um, you know, a computer and being this faceless kind of person that can create text and write stories, etc. Adam's face is going to be all over YouTube. Oh my! Oh my <laughs> so, so there's, there's, some, there's something here. There's there's something here that you've both said and, and and has really kind of resonated with me, which is the first time you do it. You're nervous. The first time you do it, you're thinking, "Oof, you know, is it going to be well? You know, is it going to be well received? Does anybody actually care?" And you know what we're talking about is doing anything for the first time. It's always going to be nerve-wracking. It's always going to be, you know, um, you know, scary. Uh, but until you do it that first time and actually write something and, and put it out there, you know, you'll always be in that mindset of, "Oh, well, I could have done or I might have done." So. You know, whilst you both and I, I, I hear your reservations and, and concerns, but you've both done it now. You both got over that initial thing. Initial, you know, what would you? What, what, what's the next? You know, how would? You, how are you going to get into that mindset now? Of actually, the more you do it, the better you get at it, because that's what happens with blogging. You know, the more you do it, your writing style becomes better. Your thinking process is actually improved through it. So, you know, now that you've taken that step, and I know Adam, you're a little bit further. They're ahead. I've written a few more than Lorna. But you know, is it something that you you're going to continue doing now? I think so, Mark. Definitely. Um, and I'm learning as well. You know, I'm learning kind of what a good blog looks like and ones that were not so good. You know, one that I put up on DBG community that didn't really get any response. And you know, that's fine. I accept that was the um, the belief one. And I, I kind of read it back myself and. Um, there was a lot of words in there. It was quite a meaty blog, and on reflection, I think that okay, if I was the person logging onto the Beach community, would I sit there and read for it all? Probably not. So a good reflection I'll take away from that is shorten it down. So every blog I'm doing, and that isn't that many, as I said, I'm kind of learning. And one of the um, most successful blogs I did in my last organization, um, and I've May attempt this, and I put it on the DBG community as well. Was the Wheel of Life, where I yes, added the yeah. attachment to the blog, and again, I I think that's a nice nice bonus if you can kind of read the blog and you can practically use it as well. So just to give Lord's hand on that, it was the Wheel of Life, how to set goals going into the year, New Year, so there's all about New Year's mm -hmm. resolutions, and yeah. I talked about it, and then. At the end of the blog, they could download it and then do it themselves, and that was just a kind of quite interactive way of right. I know what it's about. I can take it away. So I'm I'm learning every every step, Mike. But mm. I think, um, yeah, I'm going to keep going with it absolutely. And I think you you're right, Mike. What you said is you, you can't put a time on it. You can't say you have to do it now. You got to, the fire in your belly has to kick in, and you go, I'm going to write a blog. And when that fire in your belly comes in, you you'll be 500 words to the good and you won't even know, you know, you'll just be kind of just writing and writing 
and it will just feel natural. I think that's the thing. You know, I, I think you shouldn't force it. Definitely not. Just let it. Let the moment come where you want to write a blog. Write it, and you'll you'll be good. I I, th I think you know there's um, two two things in Laura that this this will resonate with you because you know your first blog came after a, a new experience which was our, our last hangout. Mm. Um, there have been two blogs added to the DPG community this last week. Um, one of which um, Helen Jeffrey has wrote a post around her experiences running and how that's influenced her um, you know get things done. And Lucy Malley's just um, posted a blog as well. Lucy is our, our leadership and management program advisor. Um, and she's really kind of got that fire in her belly about Generation Y and the fact that, you know, through her reading and experience, she's been tagged with um, this this phrase of being part of the dumbest generation um, who have, you know, no attention spans. So that's, you know, that, that's in sense, not in sense, but it's encouraged her to actually write something down. And she's, wrote, you know, wrote it over a few days. And I think that's the thing, you know, you don't have to sit down in one sitting and write it. You know, blogs can take a few days to write, and you can come back to it and you know tweak it, change it, look for inspiration elsewhere. Um, but I just thought they were two really good examples of people yeah. writing from the heart and sharing personal experiences. No, no, no. sorry. No, go on, Adam. I was going to say I would love to. I, in fact, after the last Google Hangout, what you talked about with some of the challenges you've got in your organisation and with social media and what you mm. came across. I'd love to read a blog on that from you, and I know that's the journey you're going through at the moment. I'm, I'd love to find out more about it. So, um, you know, that's just kind of putting it out there. I know that's what you're currently doing. It's on your journey at the mm. moment. You're experiencing. I will absolutely 100% read a blog on that if you were to put it out there, but no pressure. It's up to you. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah, you guys put tomorrow. me under pressure. Yes, thank you very much. You did this to me last time. I think there is <laughs> something going on. I go and attend a hangout, and then what happens? Oh, write a blog. Look, okay, all right then. Now but you're challenging me, Adam. Influence. Okay, yeah, that's. Yes, yes, right, okay. No, I'm, I'm up for that challenge. I am. I, am. I mean, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't interested in it, put it that way. So, you know, if I if I didn't if I wasn't half wanting to do it, I wouldn't be on the hangout in the first place. It's just um I suppose I just want reassurance that it isn't something that I've got to commit to every week, but it is something whereby if an idea comes to me, then I can just put it out there and see what happens. And if that's what the deal is, I'm up for that. Well, so we're we're all the same, you know, we're all we've all we've all got um, families, we've all got friends, we've all got social life, we've all got jobs, we've all got hobbies. Um, you know, everyone's in the same boat. I mean, I've, I've been writing, um, blogging for, for just over 12 months now and it feels like ages. And it was a massive, you know, confidence thing with me to begin with. And still now, every time I write a blog, and press publish. You know, I'm 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 still nervous about what, like you say, what people might think. But you know, I'm 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 getting so much value from the whole writing process that, to be honest, I don't care any longer. It's just something I really enjoy doing. Um, and I would encourage everybody who's who's, who's perhaps watching this uh, live in the community or, or, or might watch the recording afterwards is just to give it a go. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Um, and I, and I think that's to say, you know, whether it's on learning and development, whether it's on HR, whether it's on fluffy kittens, whether it's on knitting, you know, wh whatever it is that, that is important to you, use that as the platform to write something from from the heart and look, just see how it develops. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you, Mike. And I have to say I was surprised at how, um, how useful I found writing the blog beforehand, that, that first one. Um, it didn't actually take me a long time to do it. Um, it just so happened I was going on a train journey the next day, and uh, with Kindle and Evernote in, um, armed with both of those, I just wrote it on the journey to St Pancras. And I got there and I thought, and I got off the train and I thought, oh, that has really actually helped me reflect back on what it was I was doing the night before. Um, so, and it was actually a really good feeling. I can't really explain why it was a good feeling, but it was just a good feeling that I've actually expressed something that I had done. And when I looked at it, I've actually felt quite proud of what I'd written. 
the confidence thing was still there, but I still felt confident. Oh, no, um, I felt proud of what I had written. So I think it, I, I would, I suppose I agree with what you were saying earlier, Mike, that it is a personal thing. It's about what you personally want to get from it. Um, and if I can replicate that feeling again, and blogging helps me to do that, then that'd be great. Are you getting bad echo for me, guys? Well, I, I don't know whether it's me, to be honest, Lorna. I'm, I'm, I mean, nobody's kind of popped up on um, anywhere else and said that it's bad. I think it's this little this little thing here that uh, cost me an awful lot of money. It just seems to be kicking back quite an echo. Um, but no, it's, it's not, certainly not, um, you know, not as bad as somebody loading a dishwasher in the background. Oh, oh. <laughs> or, some, or somebody's mobile phone going off and making alien noises. That, that switched off this time. It switched off, right? <laughs> Listen, you, you, Lorna, you've you raised an interesting point there, and something I wanted to touch upon today, which is blogging tools. Um, so you mentioned two things there, Kindle and Evernote, yes. and the fact that you were able to write a blog on a train. Yes, you know, with crazy my, pink, technology. my pink Kindle, it has to be said, my pink covered Kindle, which I've got to hear. Very nice. Just was to stress that. Yes. <laughs> Not that um, I'm a pink girl, but hey. Don't forget, this is going out live, everybody. Just FYI. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's this fine. Is, this is the person who uh, worries about putting a blog out where other people can see it. And, uh, <laughs> True. Um, so, Adam, you've um, you've written quite a few things recently about Evernote and got some really good discussions going on around Evernote in, in the uh, in the DPG community. Um, you know, why 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 is Evernote useful for blogging? Do you think? What, what's your take? I just think ideas and moments come at any given time, whether you're on a train, the underground, wherever you are, and you know, I think it's a fantastic tool to capture it, it really is, and not only capture it, but then go back to it later, I think that's where Evernote really comes into its own, and um, you know, I bought this the other day, this is a geeky moment, um, let me find it, um, I bought this, <laughs> this. So, yeah, what is that? It's an Evernote book. Now, you don't know what to know how much it costs. It was a crazy amount of money. But basically, right, when, I, when I write my notes in here, I can make a picture of it. It will then go straight to Evernote, and then I can search the words later. Now, that is impressive. So if I'm writing blog notes in here, and I... Where did I go? <laughs> it's all in there. Wait. He's going. He's at his own. Go. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Mike, um, in summary... McGee, um, great for history, also great, great for back to it later as well. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was I, a bit I'm deep, impressed. Adam. I'm impressed. Deep, you know. You're happy with that? I'm very happy with that. I am mean, very impressed. So um, I, you can tell me offline how much money that actually costs. What was that? Go I can't pom -pom. see that. No, I can't see that. I can't see it. Oh, with pom-poms. No. With pom-poms. No, really. <laughs> Good stuff. I mean, I, I, I use Evernote um, a lot. And like you say, Adam, I think they, you, you, you're going to laugh. And Lorna, this might um, you know, strike a chord with you. But a lot of, a lot of ideas for my blog come in the shower in the morning. Um, and that sounds really dodgy, but that's that's where I seem to just get little sparks of things that I think, oh, oh, right, I, I can I can do something about that. And then the first thing that I'll do is go out and just create a new note in um, my blog ideas notebook on Evernote, and all it will be is just three bullet points or a couple of, a couple of sentences that just capture the essence of it. Um, but then later in the day, I'll be able to go back to that and start writing a little bit more about it. And probably by the end of the day, I'll, I'll have a couple of sentences for me and some more bullet points. And then I'll just I'll just take the opportunity when I've got a little bit of time, an hour, hour and a half, you know, mm -hmm. just to sit down. Uh, it's usually quite late at night. Um, and, and just start padding it out and, and writing it. Um, I know, I totally agree with you, Mike. All my ideas come in the shower. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever had an idea at work in the office. Um, I think they are always first thing in the morning in the shower and then I get to work and I expand for them so I totally understand that but I agree with both of you Evernote it's just so useful to have it because as soon as an idea comes and I've written down about 10 ideas that I want to expand and explore in some shape form or another so I absolutely love Evernote uh, that's my tool of choice but I don't know if there's anything else out there anyway 
I mean, it, it, in terms of capturing stuff, I think Evernote works really well, but the, there are other tools out there that you can use to, to capture things in the moment. Um, and I suppose once you've captured the ideas and you've got them, you know, where, where do you actually post the blogs? So there's a lot of blogging tools out there. Um, you know, Adam, what do, what, what do you use? Do you, do you use WordPress or Blogger? Um, WordPress. And um, I've been a bit vacant from that recently. Um, I've gone on. Um, I want to kind of try and reintegrate myself into the world of WordPress. Um, but I found it really easy. You know, it's kind of really straightforward, really intuitive. Um, and I like the fact that you can see your data, who's looked at your blog from around the world. I thought that was really cool. Um, so yeah, um, WordPress. I haven't had the experience of any others. Obviously, the community use that to blog as well. So um, yeah, WordPress predominantly. Um, and and, and I, I started, you know, I, I did WordPress as well um, when I started my blog. But I've seen some really nice um, blogs on Blogger um, because it's got a really nice interface, and you can change it from Flipboard to Slideshow. Um, but but all these are free tools, and this is what the great thing about it is, and, and you know builds on the conversation earlier, Lorna, about you know the ability to sit in your room and write something and publish yeah. it to a potential audience of millions, or actually just five people, or, or, or just yourself. You know, there's no cost associated with it um, because you anyone can create a WordPress site. Um, go to WordPress.com or WordPress.co.uk, set yourself a blog up. You know, write what you want, um, and and it, and it's there. And I think it's just so easy now um, that you know that that's certainly not a barrier. Um, and if all else fails, just get a really fancy book like Adam and just write in it. <laughs> No, he hasn't said how much it costs anyway. I'm not going to reveal it either. You can look on Amazon if you like. I'm hoping it'd be worth every penny. I certainly didn't get it from Poundland, put it that way. So, <laughs> good. Okay, so I think this, this, is a, this is a good point. And Laura, I want to pick up on something that we, we briefly touched upon. So we talked about blogging as a bit of a self-reflection uh, reflection tool. Mm. We've talked about um, kind of sharing ideas and, and, and kind of, you know, that, that whole confidence thing. And we're talking about kind of probably external blogs here, as in blogs that, you know, you share with the rest of the world. Mm. But what about blogging in um, an organization perspective? So say, for example, if you've got an internal network like Yammer or uh, SharePoint, or any other enterprise social platform that has the ability for blogging, you know, how do you think that can be used, um, both from a personal perspective and, you know, to support what you do in your role? Um, well, as I said earlier on, some of our senior managers have been um, encouraged to blog, um, and they're using SharePoint. I'm getting a lot of feedback um, on the sound at the moment, sorry. Um, and they're using SharePoint, but I personally don't find, or maybe it's just our SharePoint site, it's not very user-friendly. Um, and I think if you're going to have a blog, it's got to somehow appeal to people to want to go and read it. So um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I'll check. I don't think I have, but let me just check that. Um, Oh, <laughs> where's he going? Is that enough? Is that enough? Is that enough? Where's he going? No, he's back. I'm back. Sorry, I don't think it's me, but I've just turned off every electric light that's I'm close to. <laughs> no problem. I can I hear mean, you, but yeah, I can hear you guys okay. But every so often, it just shows a bit. I don't know what's happening. I'm just checking my speakers now, so apologies if I seem a bit well, distracted. No, the echo's gone, Lorna. I don't know whether he did something there, but it seems to have gone straight away. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, it seems to be, it seems seems to be better. So, um, okay. so sorry, I know I distracted you there, and you were you were kind of you know giving a good example of again this whole internal thing around well, what if people you know aren't interested? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, it, well, it's it's just that our SharePoint site isn't very. It doesn't it doesn't draw people in. I don't think. I mean, um, it's. I think if you're going to have a blog, it be the best thing is for it to be easy to see and to get to, so you don't have to go to several links to actually find the blog. Um, and, and that seems to be my experience at work at the moment. Yammer, 
Um, I haven't tried blogging on Yammer at all. We just use that more for like a social networking type thing as opposed to a blogging tool. I'm not sure if it would work on there. Um, but certainly I, I'm quite interested in trying to blog at work. I've mentioned it on the Yammer site that I would, I'm would. i thinking about it and I've had quite a few people come back saying, yeah, go for it. We'd like to see what you have to say. So um, I think that's encouraging. Um, so I'm going to try it. But I'm just not confident whether the platform we've got at work at the moment is the best tool for it. That's the only thing. Interesting. I mean, the um, I mean, if you've got you've got discussion forums and things like that on Yammer, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because um, I, I follow a blog by a guy called John Stepper, um, who works for, who works for Deutsche Bank, and it was one of the articles that I shared um, yeah. earlier, which is the, the whole idea about working out loud. Um, yeah. It's a really powerful concept that that. You know whether it's a blog or a micro blog or discussion forum, any way that you can, you know, essentially share what you're working on, you use whichever way and means that you can to externalise what you're doing and to share the sorts of things that you're working on. Whether that is a a blog, whether it's a short piece, but it's that whole concept of moving from, you know, I, I'm head down, blinkered, this is what I'm doing and nobody's interested, to actually sharing everything that you're trying to do um, and the thought process that sits behind it and the successes and the failures, the, the barriers, how you've overcome that, how have you reacted to that. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's really, I won't say it's easy, but what you can do is you can use those mechanisms of communication to really start raising your profile in your own organization. And this guy, John Stepper, is, 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 you know, is, you know, is quite open about it, that without you know, his internal blogs, he would not have been doing what he's doing today um, because he's built a reputation on what he's shared. So that people can get that fact that he's trustworthy, he's credible, he does have expertise, you know, he shares that expertise readily. So again, he role models um, the right behaviours. And I think what, what I'm certainly seeing more of and hearing more about is there's more organisations use these social enterprise tools that more people have a voice, more people can, can be heard and share what they're doing and how they're doing it. I think this is a really powerful thing and I think we as L&D professionals and HR professionals, I think we need to lead this. I think we need to be role models in the space. I agree, Mike. So there you go, Lorna. <laughs> Sorry, no, I do. I'm just trying. I think there's a problem with my. I, I don't know if it's me that's causing the problem on the speakers. Sorry, there. I was just trying to sort it out, but subtly do it as well. <laughs> um, without success, apologies. Um, yeah, I think L&D can, um, and I think L&D is actually leading the way in a lot of these things, to be honest, because something that we talked about before in the last Hangout is that we are curious people. Um, we, you know, we do see things and reflect on them, and I think people do value a lot of those reflections that we often have. So, yes, I think L&D can be the ones that can lead a lot of the way around this. And blogging, again, is is a, is a great tool to be able to do that. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about that, really. I, I just think, yeah, we we are. We and I think it goes back to L and D are changing a lot of the things that they are doing as well, and the shift that they are making in terms of this social learning and blogging. I think if we can actually demonstrate it, then it comes back to this role modelling. Then it will encourage others to follow as well. I think. Mike, I think it goes back to your point about um, quiet leaders. I think you mentioned that before in a blog or somewhere. Uh, that, you know, quiet, quiet talent. Quiet, quiet talent. talent. You know, and I think blogs um, are a perfect platform for that. You know, people have got a lot to say, and you know, and lots of different views around an organisation. And I think that if they can be heard, if everyone can be heard, then blogs are are great for that. Absolutely. And if you can use like a tool like Yammer to get the word out there, and like that guy you mentioned, you know, I think that he built a career on internal blogging. Um, I know that you know, if you can share best practice or, you know, managers can share with each other what they're doing or even if it's people kind of on the front line that are kind of sharing ideas, then, yeah, blogging blogging is a perfect way to do that, I think. You know, whether it's full-on, in-depth blogs or whether it's kind of chunks, not some micro-blogging, but, 
you know, short bursts. Because I don't know, again, it goes back to Lorna's first point at the start of the Hangout, is have people in business, day-to-day -day tasks, operational, got time to sit down and have that half hour of reading a blog and going over it. And I, I, I suppose, I know some people would question that, but I, I think that they, everyone should have like that hour or half hour of development in their work, definitely. So, uh, but I think you raise a good point there, though, Adam, and, and it's a discussion that we've been having at work quite recently, is how much time does all of this take, and does a, an organization value its staff finding the time to read this kind of information? And I'm not saying I know the answer to this, but it, it, the workplace is a very different workplace to it was even five years ago. Um, and we are putting a lot of stuff out there, whether it's on an intranet site, blogging, uh, Twitter, whatever the case may be. And I don't think m most workplaces have really kind of sorted out in its head how its workforce should embrace these kinds of things. You know, it says that it likes the ideas of blogging and social media and all the rest of it, but then when staff do look at it, they are criticised and said that they're not getting on with their work and there's other things that they should be doing. And then there's policing of a lot of these activities. Now, I don't know about you, but I get up in the morning and rather than perhaps watch the news on television or whatever, I may check my Twitter or I might check my blogs or whatever the case may be. Um, at lunchtime, that's when I will do that and in the evening again, um, that's when I tend to do it. But I, so I find time and a lot of that time I find outside of work, but I value an awful lot of that. There's people in work who think, well, if it's work, then I'll only do it within the working hours. I'm not going to be doing it outside of the working hours. Outside of work, it's more their social kinds of things. So I think all employees are, are, and employers are still trying to find where they sit with how these things are incorporated within one's working day and within one's working activities. And I think until people actually can attach a value to reading a blog and how it then has an impact on their day's work and how that can benefit in terms of sharing knowledge or collaboration or seeing improved service productivity or whatever the case may be. I think that debate is still going to continue for a short while. I don't know. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think blogging is just one, one element of the mix, but what we're talking about there is a cultural shift between how people find and access information of interest and stuff that has value to them in different ways. Um, and you know, the, the whole emphasis around informal, you know, social collaboration, you know, just, just, just learning, you know, it's just giving people access to different things to help them learn. Um, you know, it's a massive mindset, mindset shift for individuals, let alone organisations. And it comes back to the webinar yesterday, Lorna, um, it was yesterday, wasn't it? It's been a bit of a hectic week. Um, yes, it was, yeah. It was, yeah. It was yesterday. Um, around creating conditions and resources um, and a means for people to connect around ideas and to remove the constraints of only being able to talk to your neighbour and actually having the ability to talk and to connect with anyone in, you, in your organisation. You know, that's the exciting thing, I think, and that's the bit that we need to capture and reinforce and, and, and it comes back to that role modeling piece again because mm. the more you do it the more people that will see it and they, we're talking about learned behaviors in my opinion I think people will learn through seeing others doing it and it's the same with blogging I think you know people see more and more people blogging on the DPG community and somebody in their say for example their CIPD group starts to blog then you can guarantee that that's going to kind of you know create a little bit of a conversation point and then somebody might say well if you're doing it I can do that and it is about reaching the sort of tipping points, both within organisations and, and you know, um, where it's just it just becomes the norm. Yeah. And that's what we that's what we've got to uh, you know strive to get to, I think. But it's hard in the in the, in this you know beginning period where it is a little bit you know it's not understood fully by organisations. How do I actually manage that? And, and Lorna, you raise a good point there about well, this is actually something that I don't want to do in my own time. Um, you know, if, if it's work, it's got to be done nine to five, and then if mm. you know, work aren't permitting or allowing you time to uh, access these things or to read these things because it's you know, unproductive um, and non-value add, then that's a, that's a battle in itself. 
Yeah. I mean, our organisation hasn't said that. I think it's more a perception that that's the feeling. And I think it's, it's you know, all these things are still, I think we have to remember all these things are still very new. Um, and it comes back to a conversation, I think, and do you know what, I've lost track of what day it is now. But I know I've had a conversation this week about things happen organically and just evolving. Um, and I, I personally am in favour of uh, just letting it happen and, you know, let blogs happen, let people try these things and see where it goes from there rather than being very prescriptive right at the very, very beginning. So, um, you know, I'm, despite what I've said up during this about lack of confidence and writing, I am actually very, very much in favour of it. I can see a huge value in it. I can see a lot of value in a lot of people um, uh, trying this kind of tool to just, you know, even, to, even just to reflect on what it is that they have experienced because I think in a busy working day people don't reflect on things. We, we do things very, life is very busy, life is very hectic, you go from one meeting to another. You know, how many times have people said at the end of the day, I've, I haven't achieved anything today? If you actually sat down and you thought, well, what have I done today and reflected on that and actually some of the conversations you might have had in some of those meetings or some new bit of information that you hadn't realised about but it kind of was, you, you heard it but didn't really process it or digest it in some way. But by actually writing a blog, you could actually start to reflect on some of that and get some meaning from it. I think that would actually make your days actually much more productive than they apparently seem. And so those days where I think I've got back-to-back -back meetings, actually a blog would actually help me sit down and think, well, what is it that I've actually achieved today? What value have I had? What new relationships or insights have I made today that will actually bring a lot of value to me in what I'm going to do tomorrow or the next day or the next week or whatever the case may be. So that's where I actually see a lot of the value in this as well. As well as being a personal story, it's also about actually seeing some meaning what it is I'm doing in a world that is increasingly more and more busy. I think, I think you're right, Lorna. I like what you said there, certainly about all paves the way for reflection and I think what I like about blogging and the potential it has is it bottles up people's thoughts and people's reflections. Whether you sent something over an email, that email will be lost 100%. You know, after a week or a month, those emails that interact with people, it seems like the only way to communicate business is through emails. But if you send the blog, it's there, it stays there, people can comment on it. I went back one of, back to one of Mike's blogs, I think he wrote over a year ago. You know, and it just stays in one place, you know, <laughs> learn that one. So, you know, it stays in one place and people can go back to it and it's a constant source of knowledge, a constant source of ref uh, reference. Mm. So if it's done over conversation or over email, it's lost, it's gone, it's forgotten. So yeah. blogs are a way to kind of keep it there, whatever yeah. time there it is. So. Yeah. No, no, I totally, totally agree with you, Adam. And I know Liz is listening to this on the um, on uh, live because she's just texted me to say that she is. But um, it does actually kind of get you to research on some things. And uh, I'll give you an example. Um, we're trying to increase live online learning in my organisation. And one of our directors has really started to buy into this, really started to buy into it. And he gave me a story. He said, you know, in Australia, they they teach children over the radio, don't they? Um, and I was telling Liz about this, and she said yes, and her husband's Australian, and she was starting telling me the story, and I went, okay, so I've now started to research on it, and now I'm thinking there's a blog there. I've got a blog about Australian children learning over the radio. So, but that came out of a conversation I had with my director, in then talking to Liz about it, who then told me about what happens in Australia. And now I'm thinking there is a story there that I can write about. And you're quite right, Adam, could have put that in an email to Liz about that. But I'm now thinking about putting it in a blog, which other people then can see. And it will hopefully add value to what it is I'm trying to do in terms of improving live online learning in my organization. So it does, I think, have huge value. It's just about doing it. You know, because there is something about there's a thought, and yes, you, it's great to have this Evernote and whatever tools that you have, but you've got to convert it from an idea and a thought into action.
and I think we haven't talked about that but that I think is the crucial part of it you know um, I'm a great one for having loads of ideas in my head in the shower you know as I'm walking down the street I probably need a, something to record some of my things because I'm sure I'm talking to myself as I walk into work um, but it's at, it's stop laughing um, it's it's converting those ideas and putting it down on paper um, and I think coming back to what you said earlier start small try it out see how it goes and build your confidence around it rather than perhaps aiming way too aspirational and writing copious novels or whatever the case may be and I am encouraged by the first blog I did I'm, I'm, I'm still surprised that I wrote it um, but it is a, it has had a major impact for me and I think I'm hoping that you will see the blog I've got a name for it as well my blog by the way which I was telling um, Liz about so I have got the ideas about it it just it means converting it from that idea into some kind of action so watch this space gentlemen well, the, the only person the only person who can do that Lorna, is, is you you know with blogging know. it's a very personal experience so you know you can talk about it and we can all talk about it but absolutely right you've got to do it you've got to move to action you've got to yeah. change something that you, you're not doing um, and it becomes habit it becomes part of what you do and who you are and I, and I think, you know, just the last five minute conversation has just made me, re made me really think of how, how much I've learned and how much it's helped me in what I do now, reading other people's blogs. Um, and it was interesting because a blog that I wrote the other day was a continuation of a conversation that David Godin and I had 12 months ago when I first started blogging. And it was actually um, David, Perry Timms, uh, and, and, and you know lots of people out there that, that you know far too many to mention in fact who have all inspired me and encouraged me as well by adding comments to blogs you know letting me know that actually something I've written has helped them think about something as well and you know we are a community and I like to think of this as a you know a community um, you know because as a community we've all got a sense of belonging we've got you know something that we're trying to work towards at the end whether it's you know, improving learning and development or doing something different. Um, and we can all support each other in this process, Lorna, and I think that's an important thing to remember. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm feeling the love, trust me. I'm feeling the love. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Um, that's not the name of my blog, by the way, but I am feeling the, blo I am feeling the love. I think you have to approach it with, with no fear. No fear, you know. Uh, approach it, uh, you know, like you know you can fail. Uh, you know, like, don't worry about, you know, if someone's going to look at it and, you know, I, I think just, just go for it. Like Mike says, speak from the heart. I mean, that's the, that's the art of blogging. That's what I've learned. Uh, the quest for perfection, you'll never get perfection. So just speak from the heart and you'll be surprised. You'll surprise yourself and I feel you'll delight a lot of people's work because I love, I'm looking forward to your blog. So, okay. um, the pressure. No pressure. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to your blog. <laughs> are, are you really? really? There's a lot of emphasis on the really there, Mike. No, no, no <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but, I, I mean, just, just going back to the start of the conversation, Adam, you mentioned something around getting somebody to read and review what you're writing. Okay. Um, and Phil Wilcox, who couldn't make it tonight because he's, he's with his little boy, uh, Joseph. Hi, Phil. Hope everything's all right. Um, but me and Phil are blogging buddies. And we, we share each other, um, you know, the, the posts that we write. And if we can give some feedback and some critique and just some 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 ideas towards mm. it, then we will. If we haven't got time, then then we don't. But it's a nice relationship that we can send stuff to each other and say, look, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I've done. You know, what do you think? Um, so don't don't be afraid to kind of you know buddy up with somebody or, or ask somebody to give you know some some open feedback first and foremost. So I think if you do that, you know, it just helps you with your um, with with your ideas and the, and the process of writing. Okay, so Adam, do you want to be my buddy? I'd be more than happy to be your blog buddy. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, let's see. Connections, connections Sorted. are brilliant. Um, cool, guys. So, so the time is, is kind of half nine. I know we started a little bit late, but um, it's you know it's been a long day, I'm sure, for us all, and I've I've really enjoyed the conversation. 
how would you, how would you, how do you want to leave this? So if anybody's watching kind of in the live in the community or anybody watches this recording, I think there's a couple of strong messages that have come out for me. Um, but what what would how would you kind of encourage anybody who's watching this who's either not blogged before or has blogged and is wondering whether to continue or not? What how would how would you leave it with them? And I'll come to Lorna first if that's all right. Put you on the spot. Thank you very thank you very much, Mike. You have a habit of doing that, so um, <laughs> it's all duly noted. Um, <laughs> I think all I would say is I am somebody who um, has lacked confidence in a, a number of things and writing was one of them but I actually would actually say that I surprised myself at how um, enlightening blogging can be and I think if you haven't tried it try it at least once um, and I did it in a very I, I'd say intimate way, if you like. It wasn't in the. It wasn't out to the the millions of people that are out there. Um, it was on a local com, uh, community, and I did get some some good likes from that as well. But try it, um, and I do actually believe that try everything at least once. And if you've tried it and you don't like it, then so be it. But try it and reflect on it. Um, and, and see what happens from that. But I, I think everybody probably has got a lot of great ideas and thoughts in their head that can just remain thoughts and ideas in their head. And wouldn't it be wonderful if other people knew what those were? Um, so that would be my message coming from today. And I certainly feel that I will give it a go. Um, at, at least try it and see how far I get with it. I have got uh, lots of ideas that I I'm hoping people will find it interesting, um, but yeah, give it a go. So, for me, coming from this this hangout, it's I'm I'm ready to give it a go. Fantastic, Adam. We lost you there, buddy, but um, you, you're back. Can you hear us? Yeah. Um, okay. Can you hear me? All right. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, mate. You look as though you've lost your headset, but we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I've left my headset. I've switched computers. I had no idea what Lorna said, so. If I duplicate your advice, I apologise, Lorna. Um, mine won't be as long-winded, I don't think. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, uh, I, I just think be fearless with it, give it a go, and speak from the heart. I think that's it, you know. Um, and they come at random points. So, you know, I, I was on the underground the other day, and this guy um, was really happy. You know, I don't know if you've seen him. If you're in Oxford Street, he does this kind of like mad MCing and he kind of G's everyone up at the start of the day and it's crazy, it's, you wouldn't expect it of someone who works on the underground and I thought this is great blog material and you could write about you know how much he created a smile, how much he made people happy etc and just be prepared the blogs might come at the most random time and uh, if they do have somewhere to write them down, have a notepad, have an Evernote notepad, whatever um, <laughs> but just have some on cushion. <laughs> yeah, on the cushion but just know, uh, just note them down. You know, like you know, your blogs won't all come at once. You won't write a thousand words all at once. They might start as a small hunch, and they will, then you can build on them. So don't think you have to sit down for an hour. <laughs> okay, I don't don't think you have to sit down for an hour and write it all down. I think that they will. Um, they might start small, and you know, they might come up. You know, I watched a great film the other day called Moneyball, and I want to write a blog about it. And um, yeah, again, um, but I, I've wrote about two lines so far, but I know that eventually, maybe a year from now, it will be a blog. So, um, yeah, okay. In summary, just speak from the heart and be fearless. Do it and be brave. That's my advice. Fantastic. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think there's uh, any, any other advice to build on that. Um, I know there's a bit of echo coming from your screen now, Adam, because we've got the headset on just do it, it. Um, uh, remember it is CPD evidence, evidence as well, well for anybody for from the CIPD, CIPD group, group if you blog, blog you can use it as CPD evidence as well um, so that's it, let's wrap it up Lorna well, thank you very much, Adam thank you very much really enjoyed thank the chat you. and um, we'll, we'll get another one in soon yes, yes thank, thank you, you. have a lovely Easter everyone all right. Bye. 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 Bye